the broadcaster. Let's find out more about these historic events. Tonight, on Project Algerian. It's Friday the 12th of March, 1954. A telephone begins to ring at the offices of the Erie Dispatch Herald newspaper in Erie. A single reporter is on night duty and scrambles to the phone. The reporter is shocked to hear that local TV and radio station owner, Edward Lamb, is now the target of a large government investigation and is publicly being accused of supporting communism. A crusade founded on lies and ignorance. Brought on by Senator Joseph McCarthy between the late 1940s through the mid-50s. A typist was quickly brought in to help the reporter assemble the story. The reporter remarks that they will both most likely be fired, since the owner of the television station is also coincidentally the owner of the newspaper. To make matters worse, the Federal Communications Commission was threatening to not renew the licenses of both of Lamb's AM radio station and television stations in Erie. The reporter and the typist worked diligently through the night as they struggled to put the pieces of the story together. A story of this magnitude has to be right. You're probably wondering, how did this happen? Well, to fully understand the details of this complex story, we need to go back to the very start. Edward Lamb was born to British-born Clarence and Mary Lamb, near Toledo, Ohio, back in 1901. He was one of ten children growing up in a poor family. Clarence Lamb, his father, was a commercial fisherman on Lake Erie, and Mary Lamb was a housekeeper. Lamb entered Dartmouth College in 1920. He received his law degree from Western Reserve University in 1927. In 1934, Lamb successfully represented the workers of the violent Autolite strike, which resulted in the Battle of Toledo, where 1,300 National Guardsmen fought against 10,000 workers for five days. The clash left two strikers dead and more than 200 injured. The strike is regarded by many labor historians as one of the three most important strikes in U.S. history. In 1946, Lamb successfully argued a landmark Supreme Court case involving labor, which created a lot of new enemies. The Supreme Court decided that workers were entitled to be paid for required preliminary duties after arriving at the places of work. A decision many corporations didn't like. In 1947, Lamb became interested in media and began buying up newspaper companies. He purchased the Erie Dispatch Herald newspaper in Erie, Pennsylvania. Lamb quickly expands his empire and begins to buy radio stations. Over the next two years, 
he creates a small portfolio of profitable media outlets. But now, he's got his sights set on something larger. A new technology that will revolutionize the modern world, as we know it. Television. Edward Lamb will be constructing the first television station in Erie. On the morning of March 15, 1949, the citizens of Erie were lining up to see the new $300,000 television station that had been constructed on State Street in just six weeks. The station was filled to capacity and excitement filled the air. Suddenly, an engineer in the control room flipped a switch. WICU Television is on the air. At first, only a few locations around town had televisions. The bar on State Street and St. Joseph's Orphanage were early adopters. The station had many guests throughout the day. Some of the guests were introduced on TV by Edward Lamb himself. The station drew visitors of all ages, young and old alike. It may be difficult for some people to understand the attraction of a TV station today, but back then, everyone was curious how this new technology worked. And at the end of every night, the station would go dark. It didn't take long before everyone in Erie wanted a television. It didn't matter how old you were, everyone was hypnotized by the glow of a television. Sales of these magic boxes exploded. The first residential home to purchase a television in Erie was the family of Robert Nuba. Nuba was a beer delivery truck driver making $70 per week. If you wanted to buy a television, you'd better get in line. Early appliance stores, such as the Boston store, began selling televisions faster than they could keep them in stock. Imagine, an entire industry seemingly developing overnight. Everything from antenna installers, to salesmen and delivery drivers, right down to the newly created trade of TV repairman. Edward Lamb's TV station would change Erie forever. But that's not the end to this story. In 1952, Edward Lamb once again expanded his media empire in Erie by purchasing the local WIKK radio station. Sales of radios at the local appliance shops increased for about a week. By that time, everyone knew the future was in television. All eyes were on Edward Lamb's WICU. It was the only station in Erie until 1954. But not everyone who was watching was entertained. We now know that good old Uncle Sam was also watching. Apparently, the sale of the radio station set off some red flags with FCC head John Durfer. Durfer was a huge supporter of Senator Joseph McCarthy's crusade against wealthily and influential businessmen who had been accused of supporting communists. A very costly and lengthy trial followed. After three years, Lamb was found innocent, and his license was finally renewed. 
Meanwhile, back at WICU, the employees of Channel 12 are in the middle of creating their own shows and newscasts. These locally produced shows often highlighted the unique culture and traditions of the area, which helped to foster a sense of pride and belonging among Erie's residents. Overall, locally produced television content played a vital role in bringing people together and building a sense of community in Erie. Erie broadcaster Edward Lamb died on March 23, 1987. His family continued to run the station until 1996. You've been watching the broadcaster on Project Algerine.